Hey you guys, welcome to the hop for Easy Lights by Pear Blossom Press. These lights are the easiest way that I've ever made a light up card. I was always intimidated by paper switches and lining things up and all of that terrible stuff. These easy lights are literally the easiest thing that I've ever used in my life. And this hop is going to have a lot of inspiration, tips and tricks and all the good stuff for creating with this product. So I showed you in the beginning there, the easy lights come packaged in these cute little blue tissue papers. It's so cute and I love how Amanda takes that extra step to package them so beautifully. They come in different size packages. I have the five pack and trust me, that's what you want because once you make one of these, you're gonna see how easy it is to create. So let's get started. I'm going to be creating a nighttime camping scene. This is the Kindred Stamps Forest Stencil. And I sprayed the back of it with Pixie Spray and inked up that first line of trees with some evergreen ink and then I even added some blue to the tops for some shadows. Now the awesome thing about this stencil is that there are two tree lines, two different tree lines in the main stencil, but then it has these negative portions so you can do some awesome masking techniques. So I stenciled on the one line of trees, I masked it off with that inner portion, and now I'm going to stencil some more trees behind that. So I'm gonna have a double layer of trees. And this is really, really easy because the stencil has all these pieces that are needed. Check that out, super cool. And I'm just going to, if you missed any areas, I've just added a little bit of ink on my blending brush and blended right over the top. I started with a darker ink, so it's no problem to add some lighter inks on top of that. Now I want to have a night sky in my background, so I am just going to double up these masks. I'll lay down the first one and then lay down the second one right on top. I sprayed the back of them with pixie spray so I know they're not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to blend on my night background. So for nighttime skies, I like to have purple near the edges of the trees. And then I will blend on some dark blue up at the top just to create some dimension and some pretty colors. Now I did notice that I had not placed my stencil in the correct place the first time. So I just shifted that into the correct area and then I'm just gonna keep on blending. Now it's time to reveal that nighttime scene. So I'm just gonna pull off those masks and check this out. I absolutely love this. Now, just like I had before, I didn't line up my stencil quite perfectly. So I'm just going to go into those white areas, the highlights around the trees and just blend on some more of that purple ink. It'll cover up most of it and some of it that's left behind is kind of like a highlight or a shadow. And in the end, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to grab the Kindred Stamps Moon and Stars stencil so that I can stencil on some Gina K Designs Gold Glitz Glitter Gel. Now you saw here when I took off my lid, it looked like it separated and it may have. What I have learned about this Glitz Glitter Gel is that the gel itself is actually clear. So that's what you saw sitting on top. The gold color comes from the glitter. The glitter is what is actually gold colored. The gel that it's sitting in is literally just clear. So if you find that it looks like it's separated, give it a stir. That's just the glitter settling to the bottom because it must be heavier than the gel itself. I stenciled that on over that moon and stars stencil and check that out. I have this cool glittery stars background. And I do wanna mention that I did have those negative portions of the trees from that forest stencil on top so that I could mask off those trees. I didn't have stars in front of them. I stamped my images from the Pink and Main Happy Camper stamp set and colored them in with some Copic markers. And by the time I was done coloring, that Glitz Glitter Gel in the background was dry. It doesn't take a long time because it's such a small area that I applied that to. So I arranged these images where I wanted them to be on my card. And you'll notice here that there are three portions that could light up. The headlight of the car, this little bear's flashlight, and then I have this little lantern here. So I'm going to poke a hole where I want my lights to shine through. And I'm just using a paper piercer. You could use a little punch or a little die if you have one. I don't, so I just use my paper piercer and I find that this is the perfect um, size for that. So I need to have the holes continuing on through my images to my background because I want the light to be able to shine all the way through. So I lined up my images where I wanted them to be on my card 
And then I just took my paper piercer and pushed through the holes that I had already put in my die cut images and punched little holes through my background. So now I have holes that are gonna line up from the very front of my images all the way to the back of my card. I have a piece of vellum here and I'm just coloring it with a yellow Copic marker. If you have yellow vellum, that'll work just as well. I don't, so I decided to make my own. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the light that shines through to be tinted yellow because that's what color a headlight, a flashlight, and a little lantern would be. If you want your light to shine through purple, just give yourself a little purple piece of vellum and that will be absolutely fine. I'm going to add my images onto my card now. I'm using foam squares. And when I do this, I am lining up the hole in the headlight of my car with that hole in my background. And I found that it was easy to do if I held my card up to my light so the light shined through the hole in the background and then I could line up the hole in my little images with the light shining through the hole of the background. So that's why you'll see me keep picking my card up to look through. I found that that was the easiest way to do it. I'll use some iCraft Ultra Bond Liquid Adhesive on the images that don't have light up elements so that they are glued down flat to my card. All the images that have the light ups will be popped up on my card. So here's what my card is looking like now. You can kind of see here all those holes in the images will show through to the holes in the background and that yellow vellum will be in the back. Okay, so my camera kind of went fuzzy here. Don't worry, I do realize it and I will fix it. So I'm just gonna kind of talk you through what I'm doing. Here's the easy light, um, the little push button light up element. Super easy to use, but you do want to make sure that that little purple button on the right, that's where you're going to push to make those lights light up. So what I need to do is kind of position this on my card and mark where I want that to be. And then I realize that I need to know where to put the lights. So I'm going to peel back that vellum, temporarily add this card front onto my card, and I'm sticking my pencil through the holes that I punched and just making a little dot so that now I have marked on my card base exactly where I want those lights to go. So here is that light up unit. I'm going to add some strong double sided adhesive to the back of this little push button here and I'm going to adhere that down first. I find that this is the easiest way for me to complete the card. If you want to add your lights first and then put the push button down later, you can do that but I find it's easiest to add this onto my card first. So I am positioning this where I want on the front of my card to push to light up these elements. That little purple button, that's where I put right where I had marked my pencil that I wanted to be able to push on my card. So it's gonna end up being right on the right side of that tree line. Now it's time to tack down the lights. So there are three strings here, and each string has actually two strings because you need a positive and a negative. So I'm just going to kind of loop around the excess wire, and I'm going to put the light right on top of one of the dots. For me, it's easiest for me to start with the light that is furthest away from my unit. So this is the one that will actually be for the headlight of the little car. And then I'm going to work back towards the light up uh, push button of my card. So this light will be for the flashlight. And all I'm doing is just putting the light right on top. There's like this little yellow LED bulb. And I'm putting that right on top of the pencil mark where I marked where I had my elements for the front of the card. And I'm just using some washi tape to tack down the excess wires. Really, this is super easy and a whole lot simpler than creating paper switches. All you had to do is just pop the battery in and check this out. When I push, it works like magic. And I do have a tip for you. I test that the light works all the way through my card. So every time I do something, I push that button and make sure it's still going to work. Here I'm adding some double-sided tape on top of the wires just to make sure that they are not going to move. I don't feel this is a necessary step. It just is for my own peace of mind. This tape is stronger than the washi tape. So I'm just gonna add that over the wires, making sure that it doesn't interfere with the light bulbs themselves. And then I give that button a press to make sure that everything is working okay. Now you want to create a little um, 
like a well for your light up unit because you don't want that button to be constantly getting pressed in the mail. So you need some dimension behind this. So I'm going to add a double layer of foam tape all the way around the outside edge of my card. It is okay to put the tape over the wire like I'm doing here, but don't put the tape over the battery unit, the push button, or any of the actual light bulbs because that will interfere with your light up mechanism. So as you can see here, every time I add more tape, I'm just kind of pressing that button to make sure it works. And since everything is okay and my wells are all complete, I'm going to add my card onto this light up mechanism, covering up all that ugliness of the wires and all my extra tape. I'll push that button and check that out. All three of these little elements light up so perfectly. I added a stamped sentiment at the bottom of my card as well as a little instruction that says push here so my recipient knows to press the button to light up the card. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoy this hop for the easy lights from Pear Blossom Press. Leave me a comment here or over on my blog. Every blog hop is not complete without a giveaway, so make sure you leave me a comment to be entered in to win some fabulous easy lights. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!